fans, do you want to win your share of $100,000? Simply enter the houseofboxing.com fight night prediction challenge. Compete with boxing fans around the world. Simply head over to houseofboxing.com and sign up now. This is Charlie Parsons for Boxing Social Association with houseofboxing.com and Empire Fight Store. Mr. Dave Caldwell, how are you, sir? Very good, thank you. Very happy. I'm sure you are. Um, Muhammad Ali, let's talk about him. Uh, every time I speak to you, I'm always so impressed by his maturity. Such a young lad, uh, moved away from Leicester, now in Rotherham with you. Um, happy with how it's, how it's gone and first six rounds bank for him tonight. Do you know, I've just been saying to him, um, his first year as a professional, drawing to a close, um, I couldn't have imagine he has made the strides he has done you know I'm very proud of him he's come from just boxing kids as a 15 year old not having a fight having some time out of the ring while he you know he had an hand operation then coming in and going straight into professional boxing where you're fighting men um, and tonight in his first in his fourth fight fighting his first six rounder against an unbeaten fighter that's in shape and looks quite scary looks you know he's ready to go uh, I thought he handled it really, really well. I'm proud of him. He's been very active. I think he made his debut back in March on that Next Gen show. Um, I think that was his fourth bout tonight. Yeah. But I suppose that's what you need when you're that age, right? And just progression and, and sort of also the nurturing with yourself and Sam as well. And um, he's a man who sells a lot of tickets as yeah, well. Yeah, he's got a great fan base. Great. But that, that stems from him and his, his family. They're nice people. So, you know, they're, they're very popular down in Leicester. Um, it's great to work with and, and, you know, his fans, his friends, his family, um, they all come together and, and show the support and they travel. That's the big thing is that they travel in numbers, um, which, you know, in this day and age, there's, there's a lot of money. <laughs> but they keep, keep turning up. Um, he'll have a little rest now. He's going to go on holiday, um, have a little break, and then he'll be back in the gym learning. We will probably the possibility that he might come over. Um, I've got Ebony Boxing in San Francisco, December. I want to take the lads out there sparring. So he'll come over there um, and educate himself some more. Well, Dave, that was my next question. You mentioned it, uh, a trip to the States. He's somewhat imminent, December. Um, Avril Maffey is the opponent for Ebony Bridges. He's had a little bit of criticism online. Obviously, she is coming off the back of a defeat. We know that Ebony was going to have a, a voluntary and then maybe look at unification. I suppose away from that, massive experience, a massive profile and a huge card. Yeah. Um, listen, I don't manage Ebony. I train her. Um, I get what people are saying. I can't, I can't yeah. deny it. Um, but it happens, in, it happens a lot. <laughs> Come on, it happens a lot. Um, and so it's not just this. I think obviously it's made a bigger deal because it's Ebony because she divides opinion. Um, you know, people are either big fans of her or can't stand her. Um, this is, it's a character in boxing. It's, you get that a lot with a lot of people. Um, and, you know, because it's her, then the ones that aren't fans of her are making louder noises about this, which, like I said, it happens quite regularly. I mean, you look at a lot of, a lot of, um, in the women's game, you look at a lot of uh, the girls that get a world title opportunity. Is, and you, you know, sometimes profile, sometimes that's just how it is. And it's not, you know, I'm not saying it's fair, but it happens in the men's game as well. You can have guys that are, that, you know, very, very good fighters, but they don't sell a ticket. And so they don't really get pushed the same as the fighters that aren't as good, but sell a lot of tickets. It's promoters see it as a business. Um, and, you know, Ebony, she's, you know, she's got an opportunity to box on, on the Haney Progray on the car. That's massive. That, that is massive. And when you think, I think she'll only be boxing something like six years, seven years. Um, she's made big strides in her career to be where she's at. Um, and to have an opportunity like that for somebody like that that's come from nothing really, yeah. she's not going to turn it down, is she? And if it's, you know, if it's a, an opponent that's that on paper, you would say, oh, well, because there's, there's tougher opponents out there. It's not really a, a thing. She's coming off. To be fair, she's coming off an injury. You know, she's had a really bad hand, hand uh, a really big hand operation for a major injury to her hand, um, and she's with a new coach, uprooted her life and everything. She's not going to come back after having a year out in a life and death against a, a top top fighter, because most fighters don't. Let me pick your brains on the world of boxing as a whole. Next week there is a spectacle that's on, and it's not for everyone. Tyson Fury versus Francis Ngannou. 
Now, I think there was like an element of, and I think there still is an, an element of maybe not intrigue, because I think a lot of us know how the fight's going to go or know that Tyson can sort of toy and, and, and sort of treat it how he wants. But first time we'll ever see the UFC heavyweight champion against the world heavyweight champion in boxing. Will you be tuning in? <laughs> I'll be honest with you. Um, I was in, I'm not intrigued in the... I wasn't intrigued in the fact that, oh, I think Ngana was going to win. Never yeah, thought yeah. Ngana was going to win. Um, but because it's an event, yeah. I was like, mm, maybe. But then for me to promote the event, I'll tell you what did, I, I, the, the, the actual video, the promo video Fantastic. is amazing. It's one of the best things I've seen, right? That is, if anything's going to sell it, it's that. But the problem is they put out clips of Ngana on pads. Ads. Mate, that's dog shit. I can't, I can't look at that. I think he's got any chance at all of winning that fight. And when I saw that, I was like, I am paying for that because it's all about what Fury wants to do. And it's like, I might, be, it might be harsh, but it's true. Fury's been in with with far better fighters that are boxers, throwing faster hands, and he's been able to cope with that. Mate, unless that was a Unless that was done purposely to make him look poor, there's absolutely no chance whatsoever he lands on him. It, it, like, literally, Fury will be able to stand on the ropes, just watch him, watch the shots, and it'll be like Matrix. He'll be doing the old Keanu Reeves job, and he'll just watch the shit going past him and just count whatever he wants to do because he's slow. He might be a big lump, but he's, he, you know what it reminded me of? You know, you know, you see these big bodybuilders, and then you see him on, on the pads, and then you see him going... You know, they've got all that size about them. They just punches look heavy. Yes, they're heavy to connect, but if, to get from A to B, it needs to be a little bit quicker than that to get on, on Fury. So it's the clips where I was kind of like the, in, the intrigue and the whatever I might have been interested in where it's made me think, I, I can't not even bother. Do you know, I'll, I'll be honest, actually, now I'm thinking about it, the one saving thing is what they might get me money for is Wardley yeah. against... Adelaide, I think I'll, I'll pay for that, to be honest, because that is a fight that I actually, I, I'm looking forward to seeing. For me, that's the, that's the fight. You're making my job very easy for me. You mentioned San Francisco, and that was my next question. And my next question was Wardley yeah. Adelaide, yeah. and you've brought it up. I love it, the connection. Um, Probably because we're on the same sort of height level, so my brain's like... You said it, not me. I was just about to go with that myself. Um, on, the to on the topic, British title sanctioned in Saudi Arabia. Um, I think it's the first time we've seen that. Your thoughts? Didn't they say at first that they weren't going to sanction? Yes. It? Right, okay. Um, I don't know. I, listen, I think it makes sense for it to be because it's two British fighters. Um, but, yeah, um, I don't know. I don't, does it make any difference? Does it make any difference at all? At least the British title's being kept active when it's moving, do you know what I mean? So I ain't got a problem with it. I'm not going to say, oh, well, why are they doing that? It is what it is. Lastly from me, Anthony Joshua. Um, I don't know if you've seen, but he's, he's doing this thing where he's locking himself in a dark room for four days. What do you make of it? So, first you've got to think, OK, well, it's a bit strange. Um, but, actually, if he pulls that off four days, Man. locks in himself in a room and he's blindfolded, pitch black, no noise, nothing, alone with his thoughts for four days, Mate, if that doesn't send him fucking conquers, then he's done really well, because I couldn't do that. I was going to say, do you not think you come off a bit worse I, off the yeah, bat? 100%. I would go nuts, yeah. because you, if there's that, you know, obviously there's that bit where you, you're a bit bored. When you're a bit bored, what, what goes yeah. past that way, if you don't solve that boredom, to be able to control your mind like that, and then you're alone with your demons and things like that, and you have to sort your head out. I understand all that. I think it's really oh. good, because... If he can do that, then then mentally it's actually a real um, it's a real uh, achievement mentally, and it will develop his mind unreal. But I think he'll fuck him up <laughs> if he does it. I can't, listen, and if he does it, I'd love to sit down and have a chat with him and say, "How did you do that?" Because that takes some serious mental capacity. Um, will it um, will it improve him? his boxing I don't know I don't know but whatever makes you feel more confident in yourself then you do and so I get it I, I get why he's doing it I think it's it's unreal it's an unreal challenge 
Manuel Char is the name that he's been linked to fighting next. What yeah. would you make of that? Uh, the problem is the division's not great, is it? Um, but the problem with a Manuel Char fight is it don't it don't really mean anything. Or it, a Manuel Char's just like well. How does this man still have the WBA belt? Uh, that's just well, also that's how he that's all right. So that's how he gets yeah. the fight because he's got the regular. WBA regular that that everyone forgot that he had. Yeah. Um, and these regular belts are just bullshit because you, you've got another fight that could be happening where it's for the undisputed title, but yet you're gonna have somebody else running around saying mm -hmm. they're WBA champion. I, I don't get them. Um, so you'd have to look at rankings and say, is there anybody else out there? Because if the Wilder fight, at least they're trying to make the Wilder fight, if the, if, if Wilder fight can't happen, you see Fury are tied up. Um, who else is there? I'd, I'd rather see. I'd rather see him fight. Um, Ogovic and Otto Wallin are ahead well, of him in the IBF. Yeah, but they're, so they're going to fight for for vacant title or eliminate or whatever they're going to do. Um, so they're out of the equation. Um, but then you've got who else have you got in the division? Um, you've got Joyce Zhang. I'd, I'd rather him fight. Jia Zhang. That would be a spectacle. That, that's that's a that'd be a that'd be a good fight. Um, I'd rather than fight Joyce. Just be I know Joyce coming off a you know losses, but I'd rather than fight him than a, yeah. than a Char. You know, yeah. Char. It's like what is it? But when you're going through, if they're not available, then it makes things a little bit, it makes a little bit difficult, doesn't it? Dave, always a pleasure. Lovely picking your brain as always. Um, I suppose final message, um, Muhammad Ali with a great performance. What have you got coming up other than Ebony Bridges? Uh, nothing. I'm just waiting for a date for Stephen Cairns. He should be fighting end of December as well. So um, it could be San Francisco and then wherever Stephen boxes because he, he's internationally is. Uzbekistan, Denmark, wherever. Dave Coldwell, top man. Thank you for speaking to us at Boxing Social. Yeah.